So we are opening up the space of future tripping. And we're starting off by anchoring ourselves in to the space of it will be exactly what it needs to be for the next step in my evolution. So we're talking about future tripping. So future tripping is taking our mental bandwidth and our space, our awareness, our seated center of awareness and projecting it forwards, right? So we're going into the space of the future and we're stating that from this point of where I am right now to my desired destination, there's something in this space. And what that means is there's something that's not allowing you to connect in. So this can also be referred to as uh, transfer chains. So you have your destination and then there's these transfer chains. And not that that's exactly how it's going to happen. However, that's how we work with the mind to point the mind towards our intention. So if we were to take our destination and we go into this present moment, there's something not aligning within these chains, within these steps, within the space, right? So let's open this up a little bit further. So your desired destination, it doesn't feel as if there is really true clarity on the desired destination, right? So the desired destination, how often do you go into the space of your desired destination? How often do you go into the space of your desired destination from the purview of it's already done? So imagine yourself in the space of it's all done. You're already set. You're all, it's all complete. And you're looking back from the rear view mirror. And you're going, wow, that was a crazy ride. How did I get to be so good at this? How did I get to move myself from my frustration, not having full clarity on my destination to Oh my gosh, it just popped right in. It all made sense. And it was exactly what it needed to be in order to get me to my desired destination, to the exact space I needed to be for my destination, right? So feeling into the space of your destination, sitting in a seat of centered awareness of that space, and looking in the rear view mirror. So you're looking backwards. You're looking in the mirror backwards. And you're asking yourself, how did I get to be so good at this? Why was this so much fun? Oh my gosh, I just moved through my block. It was so quick, so easy. I just sat back, relaxed, knew that everything that was happening to me was either a lesson or a blessing. And I just sat back and relaxed. Everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. Energetically, you can feel yourself. I can feel myself shifting backwards. It's like driving with cruise control. Like, oh, I got this. Here I am, I can sit back, I can relax. I can hold the steering wheel with one hand. I can put some fun tunes on or I can white knuckle it. <laughs> oh, thank you, <laughs> right? So what if we were to loosen up the grip of control? Literally the steering wheel is what I'm feeling right now. That control, that road rage of, no, I have to get to my destination. Versus the energetic imprint of you sitting in your destination, you're in a car and you are driving on cruise control, you're there and you're looking back in the rear view mirror and you're like, Whew, oh my gosh, it all makes sense. It like, oh my, like, I can't even believe this. This had to have happened exactly the way it did in order for this to happen. And this blew my mind, right? That's leaning back. That is feeling your root chakra open up. That is just easing into a space. 
that's taking away the crunchiness, that's taking away the pressure, that's taking away the white knuckling it through life. Like that is how you put that life on cruise control. But where are you punching in your GPS destination, right? Like, where is this? Are you spending the time really sitting in the space of your destination? Right? What does that feel like? What shoes are you wearing? What outfits just like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait. Like, I am going to look so good in that. I am going to feel so good in that. I, oh my gosh, I can lounge around in yoga pants and sandals all day. Heck yeah, sign me up. That is my destination, right? Oh, beautiful. How does my final destination send emails? Do they send frustrating emails or do they send like hugs and kisses emoji, <laughs> right? How does this person grocery shop? Does this person walk through and grocery shop super quick, right? That's you fighting with time. When you go into the space of your destination and then you start pushing and pulling with time, you're making time real. And time actually is an illusion. So quantum physics is telling us time is an illusion, right? So if time's an illusion, everything is exactly what it's supposed to be for my next evolution. It's all going to make sense. I can relax a little bit. I can surrender. I don't have to white knuckle it through the grocery store, <laughs> right? I'm just imagining and like what's coming through right now really is the grocery store white knuckling it kind of driving, right? That frustration, that in and out versus having a lovely experience. So going into the space of, okay, I'm on board, final destination, sign me up, okay? But that space in between, ooh, that's crunchy. That is where I've got to rush and rush and rush and rush. And that's how we make time real versus just relaxing and surrendering into this creating, creating things from a space of relaxation. Just knowing that it's all divine timing, surrendering in. There we go. That really feels like a lot of root chakra stuff here, right? So going at a pace that feels lovely. What does that feel like at a pace that feels lovely? Do you have a schedule that feels lovely or do you have a schedule that feels crunchy, <laughs> right? And every day you're used to crunchy, you're just going to continue to get crunchy. So you're getting crunchy with time, you're getting crunchy with space, everything just keeps reproducing itself. And you'll allow yourself to feel that final destination only when you get there. <laughs> right? So what if you're only in your final destination for a few seconds? Are you going to allow yourself to hate going through the steps, to hate every process, to beat yourself up, right? Because you're just going to get more of that. You're going to put that vibrational imprint from everything that you created. And that's why it takes time, right? Time's still an illusion, but that's why it feels like it takes time to turn the ship around, Right, you created all these things that have these imprints, and now all of a sudden you're starting to like open up to like, okay, maybe I won't make it so crunchy. It's gonna take a little bit of time, right? But as in, like, it's gonna turn that ship around, right? We're not talking about a speedboat doing a U turn, right? We are talking about a freight liner, a cruise ship <laughs> turning a 180. Right? That takes a little bit of time. That takes a little bit of clearing. So just being so patient with yourself, being so kind to yourself. Right? How often do we just beat ourselves up? Always. How often are we our hardest critic? How often do we mentally go into the space of putting all of our energy into worrying? 
Worrying is like praying for it to happen. You are tuning into that space. Worrying, you're going into the space of the future and you're worrying, right? But we don't know what's going to happen, right? You're putting your thought energy into worry. So everything that you do from the space of now has a vibrational imprint of worry and you're attaching your energetic space, those chains, into a story in which you don't want versus catching yourself. This is awareness, being so raw and honest with yourself. Oops, I accidentally had a thought that didn't align with my destination. It didn't align to the journey. Can I pull myself back? Can I clear whatever's in the space? What is in this story? I'm making this story bad versus can I make this story neutral? So, okay, yes, we all future trip. We all go into the space, our mind trying to help us. But how can we say, you know what? I also choose other options. I'm also going to point my attention towards my intention. What story am I telling myself? Am I telling myself I'm going to mess it up, right? Okay, so what if... That was exactly what needed to happen in order for you to evolve to your next evolution. So rather than taking it and going into the future and having like, ooh, that destination, ooh, oh my gosh, that's bad. You don't know what those transfer links are going to bring you to, right? A lot of times the bowl of spaghetti is exactly how it needed to happen, is exactly what it needed to be. It felt like a bowl of spaghetti, but it was actually how it was supposed to happen, right? So sometimes there's things, there's things, there's lessons and there's blessings. There are teachers, there are people that frustrate us. These are our teachers, these are our gifts. What is going on? Why are we getting crunchy with these peoples? right? So going into the space of what is this? What am I trying to make real? What am I trying to make bad? So I'm taking something that's neutral. The universe is neutral on this thing. It's this thing. And here we are going into the space of making it bad versus what if the universe wanted to play ball with us? What if we said, Okay, universe, you drop this thing in, this thing that I'm worrying about. What if that was exactly what needed to happen in order for this destination, this vibration that I'm calling in? What if that's what needed to happen, right? So who are we to judge? So it's as if our higher self is at the top of the mountain already, and it's yelling back to us, it's okay, Everything is exactly how it needs to be. Everything is either a lesson or a blessing. What is still in our field? What are we still vibrationally connecting into? What stories are we making crunchy, right? What stories are we making crunchy? What if that's just what needed to happen in order for this other thing? right? We don't know. We're going into the space of the future and we're making it crunchy, right? So what if we were to work through and look at and energetically clear that space, going into the space of the now, freeing up our thought energy, moving ourselves from the space into our destination, just connecting into the space of, oh my gosh, that was so lovely. Like, how is that so much fun? fun and then going into the space of looking back so you are going into the space of looking back in the mirror and going wow how is it so much fun how was that so much fun this is opening up the space this is opening up the transfer chains this is allowing yourself to romance your future your future deserves this Right? What if we put that into the future? Now, normally, when we are sitting in the space and now, and we are future tripping, things are getting crunchy, our mind is just, oh, that inner roommate, that chatter, 
that inner critic, it's going and it's using a reference point and it's taking your past and it's projecting it forward. And your mind is doing what it's supposed to do or what it thinks it's supposed to do, which is protect you, right? That's the mind's job, that inner critic, that inner roommate, right? That is there, that mind space, the mental plane, that field thinks that it's there to protect you. So it's going to do its job, right? But we can also open up the space of, wow, I'm on to you. I'm on to you, right? We can demote the mind. We can go into the space of, I'm on to you, right? So we can start to question that voice. Like, oh, you know what? That inner critic, I'm on to you, right? We don't have to identify. We don't have to be the story in our mind. We can say, I'm on to you. I'm on to you. I know that you're trying your best to protect me. However, you're just pulling from the past. You're just reference point. Your reference point is the past. You're pulling from the past. So you are trying to make me feel safe by getting more of the past, right? I'm energetically connected into the past. I actually have a chemical space, a hormone space in which I am connected to my past. Frustration, right? I'm at that frustration, that anger, what does that do to you, right? Like you can like feel it. Your body knows what it's like. Your body might feel really comfortable in frustration. It knows the chemical makeup of frustration in your body. And it's like, this is safe. We survived so far. Just give me more of this stuff. Don't rock the boat, please. Or we can say, I'm on to you. Okay, mind, time for a demotion. I am on to you. I get to start questioning you. I get to start saying, wait a minute, right? We can go into the space. We can use our imagination. We can go into the future and ask ourselves, how was it so easy? How was it so much fun? And any story that comes up with us is the space of the mind. Anything that's crunchy is the mind. We can say, aha, I'm on to you right? Like I am calling your bullshit. I'm on to you. You tell me things to keep me in the past because you want to keep me safe. And I so appreciate you. That is what you think you're here to do. And that really is what you're here to do. Sometimes, not all the time, right? So we're just dem gently demoting the mind. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So I want to make sure that we have so much time for our attunement. So we just did a lot. Whew, right? So we opened up the space. We moved through the mental plane. The next space that we're going to is our attunement. And we, we connect into the energetic space. And we are tapping into the collective. We are tapping into souls of a similar vibration. We are tapping into that goodness. Oh, beautiful.